time for what the who are you it's time time for what to fantasy book what's the time for Wait, can we hold hold on stop the time stop hey so, Uh, uh, I mean, uh, ah, script for the um, ah, see now, now, now the ten second the time it kind of makes sense. Well, time for fantasy booking return. What better do than the Royal Rumble? Yes. Just before we get to the men's rumble, here are the cards results. We'll open with the women's rumble, which will be covered elsewhere. We will then have the Judgment Day retain against the Greeds, thanks to Rhea Ripley. Io Sky defending a tile against Mitchum. Logan Paul retain against Owens. And Roman Reigns defending by pinning LA now. But we'll head on to the men's rumble, so we start with entry number one. Wrestling is more than one royal fan. Adrenaline in my soul, something, something, go the road. And then entry number two, being the runner up from last year, Gunta. This kind of just allows us to reignite the final two from the previous year, with those two kind of going out until we have the next entrant. And just for a general thing with this, I'm not going to go through every single, not gimmick, every single spot, because then this will be half an hour times seven. So we'll try to kind of stay to half the hour. But with entry number three, we have the returning brute, Seamus. I don't know how likely this is, because I think he is just running down the contract. But I think it gives us a chance to kind of have him back in. He goes straight for Gunther's two kind of just reignite there, just brawling you, and they just beat the absolute shit out of each other. And it is just nine seconds of <laughs> bombing <and> meat. <laughs> and Cody kind of allows this kind of go ahead. He, he doesn't kind of go after a lot because there isn't much for him to add into it. Then I have entry number four, who is the returning, technically, Pete Dunne. I know Pete Dunne was made, Pete Butch was made Pete Dunne on SmackDown. It was kind of this room before that. So just for reality on the spot. Um, he enters and adds into the brawl between Gunther and Sheamus, up to the show, running a while than all three. There's not too many eliminations a big spot as we kind of are trying to build this first phase of the Rumble. One of the big issues I had going through this was it was very hard to add people in that I didn't want. Like, there was no one I added in that was like, yeah, it can come out quickly. I kind of want to have a lot of people have time, which is very odd for a Rumble match. <laughs> a lot of time you'll have some entrants that are kind of in there and just chucked out. So it was very different for this, especially when we have entrant five being Montez Ford. So he ends up running down with his more heel swagger that he's kind of been building up a bit. And he kind of just starts taking shots, starts firing, taking out Cody, Dunn, Sheamus, before Gunther ends up stopping him. So Gunther attempts to eliminate Montez. Yes, I forgot that this was a uh, part of the match instead of just brawling. But Sheamus ends up making the save. And there's a stare down yet again between Sheamus and Gunther before the two can kind of keep going again, Dunn actually comes from behind and knocks out Gunther. This gives us the brawling roots of Dunn and Sheamus across the ring from each other. And it's a very kind of nice thing for the moment until they start to brawl. You yeah, see kind of two former friends, I think, will be the storyline here, going back at it. All the Cody and I'm joining, we have four out of five brawling. As Gunther gets back up and levels the ring, so he manages to level them all as the next entrance appears, which is Ludwig Kaiser. Uh, probably an 
optional one, I'd probably go swap down for someone else, but it kind of allowed me to have those two take charge during and has gone the ordering Ludwig around to continue on solo now all the members of the Rumble. This allows some attempts of others getting back over, but it doesn't do anything until our next entrant appears, which has the buzzer sound off before all goes quiet for a few seconds. With Gunther and Ludwig, the only one standing as we hear the beast's music hit. Gunther is having a shocked face as Lesnar kind of appears and he's coming down. Ludwig tries to get the upper hand, but Lesnar just opens up Suplex City. Gunther and Lesnar don't initially fight each other, as kind of done, Seamus Ford and Cody keep coming back until all four are kind of done and the two monsters now left. They begin to now go after each other, yet they kind of struggle to eliminate one another. Before Seamus tries to take advantage of I mean Gunther, but Gunther is able to get him out. So basically, Gunther, Seamus is trying to come from behind. Gunther reverses it and chucks him out. So we end up losing Seamus as our first elimination. And the fight kind of continues between Lesnar and Gunther until we get our next entrant, then Dragon Lee, who has kind of started up very nicely, I think, for SmackDown. But he goes about his own business here in the Rumble as he starts to get going. Gunther and Lesnar continue their own battle. Dragon Lee is kind of having these battles with Ford and Ludwig, while Dunn and Cody are doing their stuff. And of course, those five kind of trade off between who's fighting who at the time. And this kind of goes on until we get our next entrant, which is still, I would argue, of recent call up of Julius Creed, who just powers his way through Lee, Ford, Ludwig, and Dunn. Whilst Cody gets taken down by Gunther, it leaves the three big men of Gunther, Lesnar, and Julius next to one another. Big E at home is very excited about these three big men slapping meat. Although there's no Goldberg, so I don't know how happy he is. Uh, all three beat the crap out of one another before Lesnar gets rid of Ludwig as Gunther eliminates Dunn. As Gunther eliminates Dunn, Lesnar is able to chuck Gunther out of the ring. But as Lesnar's kind of just chucked him out, Julius sends him over the top as the buzzer sends out for number 10. We now have number 10, which is carrying Cross. Who struggled a lot to kind of get going. I think he's kind of, he's a Triple H project that hasn't succeeded yet in anything. Which is very sad for his kind of set for it. But hopefully the new stable has got with AOP against the pride of Ford, Dawkins, and can kind of build him back up a bit and maybe mid-card. But here he runs down and goes straight for Montez Ford. Ford manages to keep skinning the cab multiple times. Cross gets more infuriated across it. Cody goes after him and Ford comes back as those three go back and forth. Julius moves towards Dragon Lee as those two NXT call-ups go at it during the Royal Rumble. All five continue this until a new entrant comes into the ring. That being Finn Balor, who goes up to Cody and all six continue before entrant 12 hits the ring. So very... Kind of getting through a few entrance, the ID here, just to kind of get going. But we do have the lights go out for number 12 before Andrade reappears with the lights back on. He runs down and cleans out for saying eyes on Dragon Lee. He ends up going to try ripping the mask off of him before Cody ends up making the save. I think a lot of people can agree Andrade will probably be in the Royal Rumble. The AW running out didn't go too well. And I think it's probably the most likely option of a return slash debut in the Rumble out of anything. Outside maybe some call-ups could do it, but the Andrade is the first choice here to have someone new come in. Battle and Ford continue to go after Rhodes before Cross takes care of Ford, nearly chucking him out of the ring, but he skins Cat yet again. Andrade nearly gets rid of Dragon Lee, and Battle looks to take advantage. He ends up finding himself on the apron with Dragonlings, so those two are kind of on the apron, going over the top rope, so either one can get them and just hitting each other and hitting each other. Bringing in entrant number 13, which is J.D. McDonough, who runs down trying to save Balor, but managed to get eliminated as soon as he enters the ring by Creed. Balor is shocked and goes against Creed, but Cody helps him out. Ford steps up with Balor, but gets jumped by Cross, who this time manages to get Ford out of the ring, but through the middle rope. And I, I know I said earlier, not having a lot of people I could just get in and chuck out. JD was like one of the only people I saw that I was like, I could bring him in and get him chucked out very quickly. There's not many other people you can do it with, I think. 
Creed and Gertie are staying cross and Bala, and Cross as all four start to brawl. Cross is taking charge before Dragon Lee ends up stopping him, but Andrade yet again runs the interception. Setting so up a kind of three on three face versus heel setup before we get our next entrant, who is main event, Jay Uso. Jay just arrives at Super Kicks, everybody in the ring staying to until it's just him and Cody Rhodes. Toe to toe, eye to eye, two shake hands. They are not super close friends, but I think their portrayal on screen has been as somewhat friends. So they begin to brawl after the shake of hands. Jay looks to get the upper hand until Balor low blows Jay. And Andrade hits Cody in the back of the head. Andrade and Balor then stand toe-toe when the buzzer sounds, with Drew McIntyre appearing. He's ready to just start chucking people out, wanting to get his rematch yet again. He enters and just starts being the absolute shit out of everybody in the ring. Some with Andrade and Balor before all that is left is Jay Uso. McIntyre turns and sees Jay and his eyes just turn red. He's had enough of everything going against him. He begins to just wail on Jay before Cross attacks from behind. He chucks Cross away and just continues that assault on Jay. Everybody now kind of has clocked that they should leave him alone. And they just all fight between themselves when the buzzer sounds. Although, as everyone else notices the buzzer, Drew doesn't even turn or kind of get anything that says he's heard the buzzer. He's just continuing that assault. With number 16 appearing, and it's the almighty Bobby Lashley, who grabs Ford, who's on the floor outside, and tells him to get back in the ring as the pride enter. They target Cross before it gets hit by a Cody Carter, which was actually aimed at Andrade. He just matched Dodge Avins, hit Ford. Lashley then for attacks Cody, but Cross chucks Ford out. Lashley then quickly tries to live in Cross, but the two both go over and are on the apron. Ford grabs Cross's foot, allowing Lashley to eliminate him. As, as Bobby heads back into the ring, Dragon Lee rushes out, but Lash lifts him over the rope, and he actually lands on a crossbody on both Cross and Ford. Andrade and Lashley go after Cody as Creed aids. McIntyre is still on Jay, and Balor is just waiting for a moment to strike when the next number hits, and, well, it's the miss. Look, of course he's got to be in it. He, like, there's no way he doesn't get pushed into this match. So, sorry. He has to be in it. It's against, like, Dolly rules. Uh, Miz ends up going up to Bella as everyone changes. Dan spawns across the next nine seconds. We have our next entrant, which is Senor Money in the Bank, Damien Priest. Priest adds Bella, but ends up having to go toe toe with Cody and Julius. Andrade looks to take advantage and eliminate Bella, but ends up getting eliminated by Priest. Jay attempts to eliminate McIntyre, but nearly gets eliminated himself, but was saved by Cody. Priest ends up eliminating the Miz, and the match is to eliminate Lashley as AOP hit the ring to take him down. Profits try to make the save, but Cross stops him for their all taken away, leading to our next entrant coming down, Jimmy Uso. Jimmy runs onto the ring and goes after Cody first. As Jay is actually against McIntyre, Jimmy tries to get rid of Cody, who survives as McIntyre fails to get rid of Jay. McIntyre, kind of as he chucked him out, expect him to be out so he turns around and he sees jimmy and his eyes just go red again and he just goes after the other russo he hasn't had the chance to go after jimmy since the clash of the castle and so he's now just laying out all the frustrations julius ends up grabbing main from behind not like that and suplexes him, allowing jay to superkick julius leaving jay and jimmy back to back in the center ring they hit one another so they're basically going backwards hit each other and turn they stare down one another as the two are about to start going and kind of begin the brother feud for Mania, which I think is almost certainly going to happen in Mania this year, I would think. I don't see them holding it out till SummerSlam or next year's Mania. So it's a good way to start it, but Bal and Priest stop it and take them both down. The Usos begin to fight back against Judgment Day before completing some tag team moves. So you can tell that it's not them forcing it. It is just purely that brothers and they've got this like internal connection. They're just able to feed off and keep going. The two end up fending off Judgment Day and go back to staring one another. But before either one of them can throw the first punch, the buzzer sounds. And out comes Kevin Owens. Owens enters the ring between the Usos as Cody gets up. The four stand toe-to-toe before Julius, Magnetite, Balor, and Priest all get up and out. All eight are ready for fight. Owens takes on Priest. Cody takes on Jimmy. Jay McIntyre. And that leaves Bella and Julius. 
No one's eliminated through these 90 seconds before they do all swap dance bars across it. But the only combination we don't end up seeing across the 90 seconds is the Usos. Entering 21 now appears, being Santos Escobar, who goes straight after Owen to eat him to face Logan Paul, Logan Paul early in the night. Even though he was losing efforts, Santos still ought to be against Owens for not letting him have that shot. He ends up throwing Balor to the apron, and Priest tries to take out Santos, but knocks Balor off, eliminating him. So we are setting up, I think, Priest Balor. I don't know how they'll go Judgment Day in real life. I don't know if they have him split or have him keep going. This kind of, I think, allows you to go either way from it. It kind of allows you to either go full force, then spling up, or full force, then staying together. Escobar tries to get rid of Priest, but Priest stands his ground. Owens now tries to get rid of Santos, but Cody nearly gets rid of them both. Owens is annoyed at Cody as Jay gets in the way. Priest, Jimmy, and Santos all take advantage and take him down. Keep in mind, during anything I'm doing here, Jay and Jimmy still haven't fought. So even in that segment there, it wasn't Jimmy that hit Jay. So the heels that I'm taking charge is our next entry appears. As LA Knight is making his way down to the ring, he gets jumped from the crowd by Logan Paul. Logan takes him out before grabbing his own microphone, saying that he is now number 22 because he is the true megastar, not some catchphrase crutch. He enters the ring gloating, but nobody's happy with him being in the ring, although Logan, it looks like, is now in the match as people take LA Knight to the back. Logan attempts to make friends with pretty Santos and even Cody before they all just punch him into one another. To Owens. Owens kicks him in the guts, hits the stun before Santos chucks him out. Cody takes on Santos before Jimmy chucks him over, but just like Shawn Michaels, Cody remains in the match. Priest grabs Jimmy, chokes him as the buzz is down, so his back just hits the mat as number 23 enters Shinsuke Nakamura. Shinsuke makes his way straight for Cody Rhodes, but gets intercepted by Creed, who he pushes into Priest's choke slam, allowing him to take on Cody. Priest, on the other hand, is about to chuck Creed over as Jay whacks him in the back. Jimmy attempts to kick Jay, but ends up hitting Priest as Jay ducks it. Jay looks back, stands right up to Jimmy. They begin to talk in the center of the ring about each other, about their family, about what is happening now. The crowd hopefully gets riled up seeing these two in the center of the ring with a lot of stuff happening around them, but nothing with them. But they want to go see what happens at the moment as the timer sounds. And the crowd, as always, will start counting down because that's what the crowd does every Royal Rumble. Entry number 24. Who is it going to be? The buzzer sounds. The Usos both look to ramp. And all those are going to do, but nothing is there. Everybody's confused until, until they hear. Woo, woo, woo. You know. Always me! And he has finally returned to doing. You. The camera kind of cuts it to Cody, who is smiling as Cardona, then hits the ring. Cardona runs wild. You can see the joy in his face as he takes down Jay, he takes down Jimmy. He dodges Priest and Creed before drop kicking them both down. Santos misses and Cody takes him down. McIntyre attacks Cody before Cardona makes a save. Shinsuke goes for Cardona, and this time Cody makes a save. Logan leaves the ring through the bomb rope, trying to find just his moment. Cody and Cardona now look at one another. They smile. Cody opens up his arms. Cody and it hesitates before they hug. The crowd goes, hopefully hot. I don't know how they'll go with uh, Ryder or Cardona being back, but hopefully it's decent for them. But the two separate and realize what they have to do, and they start. They begin to square up. Cody gets an early advantage before Cardona takes advantage, knocking him down. Logan now looks to enter back in, but the count starts again, so he decides against it. We now have entry number 25, which is Sami Zayn. Crowd gets excited to fair is out late, and although his momentum has dropped since his match last year against Roman, he is still decently popular, in my opinion, and should still get a decent reaction. He runs his way down to Roman and goes wild, although he isn't able to eliminate anyone, as it's just Zayn up, Logan tries to take advantage by low blowing Sam. Zayn skins cat on the ropes and apron until just Jay super kicks Logan to help Sammy get back in. But Jimmy tries to get rid of Sammy, but gets on the path of Jay. Yet again, these two are toe to toe before the buzzer goes and the crowd boo as they keep getting blue board by these two. But it is the heat magnet, Bomb Mysterio in the Rumble. With all the piped in crowd noise and a bit of real noise, mostly because they're annoyed the bookkeeper not letting them see the Usos fight. 
Dominance is between the users who both grab them and send them into Priest before super kicking them both. Cody Cup don't get up before Jimmy and Jay super kick them as well. The Rumble is turning to a super kick party. Logan Paul takes down the two users for LA Knight's music hits again, and Knight is running down after users to try to stop him before he fends them off and ends the ring, getting straight for Logan Paul. Taking him out of the Rumble, continually attack as referees and producers pull them apart. As this happens, Cody sees an opening and eliminates Shinsuke. Creed chucks Cody over the top of the apron as he fends off Shinsuke. Creed sees this and actually helps Cody get back into the surprise of Rhodes. Santos grabs Creed behind, but Cody saves, allowing Cardona to eliminate Escobar. Now McIntyre manages to get rid of Cardona, and we are left with McIntyre, Cody, Creed, Priest, Jay, Jimmy, Dom, and Sammy. Cody ends up attacking McIntyre as Creed and Priest go at it, and finally Dom and Sammy. Lee Mouse yet again with the use of Skepper. Jane Jimmy yet again stand eye to eye, and this time they do go after one another. No buzzer stopping, they just land punch after punch after punch. Neither one of them is going easy on each other, and they continue going at it as all the other six swap punters. They do not. So the buzzer sounds, everybody looks up to see who is lucky number 27, except the Usos. They can't stop attacking one another. The crowd hears. Punk and McIntyre go after one another. As Punk gets the upper hand, Priest joins him. Priest and McIntyre get control, but Drew is annoyed at Damien for helping him as he didn't need it. The two begin to push each other both ways as Creed grabs them both and hits a double suplex. Jimmy hits yet another super kick on Creed and even one on Jay's looks to get up. Dom tries to showboat with Jimmy, pushes him off and they get hit from behind by Priest. Priest and Dom will take charge of the ring now, but Punk punches Dom in the back and goes out to Priest, but numbers end up getting the most of them. Judgment Day see Cody and look to get rid of him, but is unable to do so as Sammy saves or Creed saves until they have enough. They chuck Sammy headfirst in the code before checking Sammy out. As Sammy hits the ground, the boss of sounds, and out comes Ray Mysterio. Ray charges down to Dom, who is protected by Priest, although McIntyre ends up getting rid of Priest, allowing Ray to go after Dom. Ray looks at his son and offers a hug. He, he still wants to get his son back, but Dom punches him, and Ray understands now that he can't give any more chances. He has to begin to take charge. And using his experience, he's able to get one over the young guy again and again. His attack is stopped by Jimmy, who goes after Mysterio, but Jay makes another save, continuing the brotherly battle, giving Dom the option to take control over his battle with his father. The two control this time. Reese is able to aid Dom as to try to eliminate Ray, but he saves him. On Creed take down Breeze, giving Ray the chance to eliminate Dom, just as the buzzer sound, which he does. Out comes the Monday Samoan Bulldozer, the street champion, Solo Sokoa. Solo walks his way down to the ring and starts to get serious. He merely chucks up Mysterio and Creed. The crowd goes silent, seems like the winner is now here. Priest tries to step up, but Samoan Spike allows Solo to chuck him out. McIntyre ch challenges but misses a claymore. Solo spikes and lifts him up, but Punk saves Drew. Punk is standing across from Solo. Cody gets up. Jay gets up. Jimmy gets up. It's three on two for the bloodline. Magnetite attacks Jimmy. Cody aids. Jay and Punk take out Solo. The ball is starting up again. Solo's powers out and rams Punk into the post. Magnetite ramps Jimmy into one for attacking Cody. Solo looks at Jay and attempts to spike him but misses before Jay sends him towards Drew and Cody. Spike Stone helps Jimmy up, allowing the bloodline to get the advantage over Jay. They go after Jay and as Jimmy holds Jay for the spike, Solo goes for it but Jay ducks and lands on Jimmy. Jay super kicks Solo, grabs the opportunity to chuck Jimmy over, which he does. Although Solo grabs him from behind, spikes not once, not twice, but thrice before chucking him over the top. Ending main event Jay's push for a main, main event mania. Solo stares down the ramp as the numbers start counting down for number 30 of the 2024 Rumble. The crowd chants as the buzzer hits. It's, it's a, a new day! day. Yes, yes, it is! The crowd goes wild as Big E returns full of energy. Biggie storms down to the ring and squares up against Solo to go. The two men battle, sharing blows before Biggie looks to be winning. Magnetite attacks from behind, leveling the playing field. Magnetite looks to ruin the return of Biggie, but Cody and Punk attack Drew. A lot now is quick steps between all five going back and forth for a few minutes until we start closing our numbers. I like the big thing I liked about the previous Rumble was Cody and Gunther at the end, and I think you don't need to rush towards having a final two match. You can kind of give more time through it. But as numbers start closing down when Biggie has Cody up for the beginning, McIntyre pushes them both over to rope, but neither go, they're both on the apron. Punk drop kicks McIntyre as well, so we now have three on the apron. All three just start going after one another. 
It's always seasonal opportunity and tries to line Punk. But Punk is able to keep him away from the ropes, focusing on the inside of the ring. Mac die, Cody and Biggie end up just hitting each other back into the ring. But as Biggie gets back in, Solo spots him leaving Punk and chucking Biggie over. McIntyre merely chucks Solo right over next to Biggie, leaving us with our final three of McIntyre, Rhodes, and Punk. Having slides and start, Cody gets up to face McIntyre and Punk. Drew smiles to see his chances as high, facing a tired Cody and an old CM Punk. But Punk looks focused. He wants to try to get that main event match that he left for. All three start to go after it. Punk and Cody try to team up against Drew, but are unable to take full control. Drew keeps throwing one away and going up to the other again and again until they both stop. They recompose for attacking from both sides. Drew is able to push Cody away, but this time Punk low blows him. But the crowd is shocked, but Punk rolls back around Cody to eliminate McIntyre. Setting up a final two of Cody and Punk. I think, honestly, in my opinion, these are the two candidates that actually win it in real life. Excluding returns, I think, and debuts. And really, outside of all those, the only ones that I think are likely is if Biggie returns, they could have him win. And if Rock is in the match, he probably wins. Cody and Punk fight out for around 10 to 15 minutes as they go back and forth as the two fight out. Paul Heyman appears in the round to see who could face the Tribal Chief at WrestleMania. As they both battle out, it is Heyman that gets too close to the match, too close to the ring, and distracts CM Punk, who was on top, who yells at him to go back to the back. Cody turns Punk around and tells him to focus on him and himself, not on Heyman. Punk stands up to him, smirks before the two begin again. Another few minutes of this is to begin to exchange signatures and finishes before we enter the key final moments with Punk knocking Cody down and then begins to taunt him. He grabs him, puts him up on his shoulders, but he takes too long. Cody's able to get out and hits the crossroads not once, not twice, but thrice. Well, he seems to also run out of stamina and hits the ground. They are both down. Yeah, the crowd can't get up excited, but Roman's Reigns music hits and he begins to walk his way down to the ring before Nick Aldis comes out with a mic. He tells him that if he continues his championship reign, will be over. Roman looks behind and walks up to Aldis. Punk gets up and shouts around before Cody turns him and pushes him to focus. Punk tries to swing and Cody hits one more crossroads before chucking him out with the ring to win the Royal Rumble. Roman looks behind as Cody's music hits and is shocked as he must face him yet again. Aldis passes Roman to the ring and raises Cody's arm as the show closes. And that was my attempt at booking the 2024 Men's Royal Rumble. Tell me down in the comments who you would have won it. Honestly, before the Seth injury, I would have Punk win it. But I'm not sure how likely it is for Seth to actually wrestle Mania. And I don't think the match needs the Rumble win. And I don't think the Rumble win would serve much purpose if Seth wrestled Mania. But thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.